the scale of the projects that they're building, like the level mm-hmm. of execution, the level of focus, of precision, you know, aren't those things that you want to sort of plant in people's heads? Mm-hmm. Like when they come to the website, it, those are some of the things that pop into their mind. Of like, wow, look at the level of just execution. Like these guys yeah. have got their messaging dialed in. Um, yeah. So again, like why, why wouldn't you put that same effort into making sure that that, that digital touch point is, is communicating those same messages and, and themes for your, your firm? Welcome to Spill the Ink, a podcast by Reputation Inc., where we feature experts in growth and brand visibility for law firms and architecture, engineering and construction firms. Now, let's get started with the show. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Calcote King, your host and the principal and president of Reputation Inc. We're a public relations and content marketing agency for architecture, engineering and construction firms and other professional services firms. To learn more, go to ref-inc, that's inc with a k.com. So today we're going to talk about um, an architecture, engineering, and construction firm's website. So it's its most valuable marketing asset. However, many of the firms um, that we work with and uh, many firms out there's websites are really just kind of glorified brochures. They don't have additional functionality that meets AEC firms' specific needs, which are quite specific to the industry. You know, in, in today's fast moving and competitive environment, it's essential to carefully plan for your next website to get the most out of it. Um, so what should AEC marketers be thinking about when they plan their next website? How can they build in functionality to meet a range of needs? Um, and I'm talking about things like project proposals, qualifications packages, team resumes, branded collateral, marketing workflows. So I'd like to welcome um, today's guest, um, and that's uh, exactly what we're going to talk about, um, Scott Jacks, um, to the Spill the Ink podcast. So Scott is a guru when it comes to building these transformative websites for companies in the AEC sector. They have specific uh, expertise in this industry. He's the founder and principal of NK Interactive, a digital consultancy with decades of strategic, creative, and technical expertise. Part of what his company does is develop custom digital tools that support marketing and business development, which we're going to get into in just a second. So I'm excited to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? You did. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, I'm surprised. It's, uh, I've heard some very interesting iterations. I'm of sure that. you have. Yeah. <laughs> my maiden name, which I use as my middle name, uh, is Calcote. Um, and so it looks um, it looks French and people want to say Calcote, you know, I'm like, no, nope, <laughs> just that. So anyways, so let's talk, I mean, let's just start with, you know, I did a brief introduction, but I'd love to hear about you and your firm and kind of how you got uh, this expertise in the AEC sector. Yeah, so we we got right into it. Uh, we've been working with uh, clients in the AEC sector and more specifically with the C component of that. So commercial general contractors, and especially contractors, but about 15 years ago, the first client that we worked with was DPR Construction. Yeah. So we, we didn't start small. A you common know, client had, of ours. Yeah. Yeah. So we had the good fortune of being able to work with DPR Construction back then. And uh, even, even back then, you know, we were able to do some really innovative things um, uh, with them. You know, some of those were using flash technology to <laughs> build out these really cool microsite annual years, year in reviews, which they, you know, previously were just doing through these just really beautiful print pieces that were coming out. And so, you know, it, I think that was just an example of us being faced with like, hey, this is how we're c- currently doing it. Is there a digital comp- digital way of addressing this as well? And so yeah. we did that for a good five or six years with, with great success. And it was just a, a lot of fun sort of taking something that was this really beautiful print piece and finding out, well, how can we translate this into uh, into a digital experience? Because more often than not, those really expensive print pieces that they were putting out there were probably finding their ways into recycling bins. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, pretty quickly. So somebody mm-hmm. scanning through that. And, you know, obviously when it's digital, you know, I mean, the, the many different ways that you can slice and dice that content and the shelf life of that content is really, uh, you know, it's 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 uh, it's it's unlimited. There, there are many different ways to sort of drive people there and to yeah. educate them uh, that's great. Well, let's talk about, um, you know, is there is there this one size fits all solution for AEC firms? And uh, maybe kind of talk me through what are the needs that AEC firms have that might be different from other industries? Yeah, I don't think there's a one size fits all solution. Um, that said, there are clearly some things that I think any AEC firm needs to be communicating to the various 
uh, folks who are going to be visiting their website, whether it's for sales and business development processes and, and supporting that process, or whether it's for talent acquisition, or even in some cases, uh, whether it's your own team members that are coming to the website. Um, so I, I do think that, uh, you know, what, uh, again, not a one size fits all solution, but when folks are coming to the website, clearly they want to be able to find out what types of projects has this company worked on? You know, yeah. what are their, their capabilities? And, and quite often, I think a website redesign process is always a great opportunity to kind of step back and really think about how are you actually positioning your capabilities? Um, it's a great time to think about you know, how you're positioning your market sectors, how you're positioning your, you know, some specialized services that you offer. Uh, you know, one that's been coming up recently um, uh, with a project we're working on right now is this client has got some some expertise in you know the mass timber space, mm. which I think is is becoming. I mean, it's a big the end result right of now. those yeah. those projects are just gorgeous projects. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, how do they integrate that expertise into the, the new website experience? How do they mm -hmm. talk about that? How do they showcase projects? Um, and to, you know, to really sort of extend that out because that is a little bit of a niche area. Um, you know, how can they now even start to develop content, thought leadership content, articles, uh, just general content that's going to be around that particular subject matter. Um, and you know, not that that's going to be some silver bullet when you look at SEO and that's going to result in them getting new projects. Um, but it is a way for them to start thinking about creating some of this really useful content that they can yeah. publish to their website. It demonstrates their expertise in that particular area. Do you still get pushback? And this is, uh, I'm just curious from, cause I've been around long enough to where I remember having conversations with uh, AEC firm owners who you know, no one ever looks at our website, you know, this is a people business, you know, uh, it's all about in person, you know, no one's ever going to Google us. Do, do you still get that pushback or do owners seem to understand the importance of their web presence now? I think they understand it. And I think even bigger picture outside of just even the website, I think they're understanding the importance of design, which is really exciting. And which is actually one of the reasons why we actually a couple of years ago as an agency really decided to go all in on the commercial construction sector. And if you happen to go to our website, you'll see that we're not talking about tech clients that we worked with, even though we have worked with a lot of, you know, B2B tech clients, professional services firms, even some consumer brands in the past. Um, and it's because I think, you know, folks are starting to understand that, yes, it's a relationship driven business, but the website can really sort of help support some of those relationships. Yeah. It can help nurture relationships with existing clients uh, and strategic partners, um, but it can also help support uh, uh, create creating some of those relationships. We understand, and, and this is, I always love to sort of play that little, you know, the myth buster game as well, because, right. you know, one of the things that I think a lot of, you know, one of the things that we have heard in the past as well is, you know, we want to be number one on Google for general contractors. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I just, that's, that's not, you know, if you're coming into, in, into it with that mindset, like that's just, uh, th there's no rational reason to, to, that that should be your, your what you're striving for. Right. Um, right. And it's it, helping just, them understand the business uh, uh, strategy and, and what the priorities are with that, um, with that goal and what, whether it is, should be a priority. Yeah. And we're definitely seeing a, a lot less of that because I think people mm -hmm. realize that yes, it's still a relationship driven business, but you know, there is this whole new wave of folks who are now entering into the, into the, uh, into the industry. And yes, they're going to continue with, with some of the, you know, those relationship driven, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, methods, but they also have different ways of just educating themselves on mm -hmm. your expertise and kind of go back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, just, you know, okay, you, you claim to be experts in mass timber as an example. Well, how can you demonstrate that to me, to yeah. me through your, your projects, your, your portfolio of work, um, but also how you're able to articulate your, your understanding of that particular you know, specialized service and um, what some of your, your, you know, your core differentiators are as it relates to that particular service and who are some clients that you've worked with in that space. So yeah, um, I, I do think that, uh, you know, there, uh, there, there is, there, there's less of it uh, today. Um, and quite often we do still have to have those conversations with some folks about like, listen, mm -hmm. your goal should not be about, uh, you know, being number one on, on Google. Um, because when you think about, you know, this, this isn't residential, you're not remodeling right. bathrooms, 
yeah. this is these are large scale projects, large scale right. commercial projects, you know, five, 10, 20, 200, one billion, one and a half yeah. billion dollar projects. And, you know, that's not how people are, are going to be, you know, looking to for your, find your services. Yeah. Um, yeah, typically the website, yeah, and B2B is a it's a reference check after they've come onto their radar. So it's not a, it often is not the introduction. It is they've already been introduced in some way and they're kind of checking to see is this firm, you know, who I think they are, do they have the uh, experience that I think they have, you know, yep. that kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, they're validating. They're validating. validating. They're not uh, just randomly happening upon your your website based on right. some arbitrary Google search. You know, nobody's yeah. going in there typing, you know, uh, where, where can I spend fifty million dollars on right. you know a, a lab environment built out um, in, right. in San Francisco? Yeah. Uh, is there and I'm uh, curious? Is there anything that you're when you're educating AEC firm leaders about? how prospects and, and clients use the web? Are there uh, insights that you find they really need to understand in terms of how, how uh, you know, clients um, use their sites and what's the most important thing um, to think about? Uh, I mean, the one thing that we do is we do communicate with them, you know, based on trends. And, you know, some of our clients are smaller, regional, all the way up to, you know, national builders um, is, you know, there are some areas of the site where we know people are going to, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's projects, it's mm -hmm. looking at leadership team bios. Um, and it's also in career sections. Um, right. It's obviously it's, it's a huge pain point in the industry right now, hiring and, and retaining talent, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, folks out in the field or, uh, in the office. Um, so I think it's, it's really, uh, um, helping them understand, uh, how, how the uh, the website can really you know help them in those uh, in those areas and, and and support their their efforts. Yeah, and making sure that people get to the information they're looking for fast and easy too. Um, I know that's a, often a real challenge is kind of thinking through that flow and and making sure that they're they're getting to that right information quickly. Yeah, and that just really comes down to process, you know. And when you're mm -hmm. involved in a in a project. Uh, a website redesign, um, you know, design will take care of itself. You'll get to design eventually, but you know, the most important part really is sort of identifying that, you know, that, that architecture for the site, yeah. um, content strategies, understanding how people actually consume content online mm -hmm. and not throwing paragraphs and paragraphs of content at people, people scan and then they make decisions at some point. Yes. They're going to want to maybe dive a little bit deeper, maybe download a, a, a data sheet, um, or actually get into a project and, and really learn more about a project. And I think, you know, projects are, are, are an area where, you know, a lot of clients are, are opening up their, or are realizing that, hey, we can actually go beyond just a couple of data points, a short paragraph and a couple of small photos that are thrown in there. You know, projects uh, on these websites are really an opportunity to go, to go pretty deep and, and to do some storytelling around those individual projects, you know, yeah. um, where, Clearly, you know, you've got your project summary, you've got video that you can integrate into that experience, you've got immersive photo galleries, but it's also an opportunity to um, to also integrate some other content uh, into those. I mean, whether it's a little micro case study um, right. or whether it's uh, going a little bit deeper with um, uh, with calling out some, some key team members who were who right. are responsible for making that project a success. Um, so it's it's really, you know, uh, helping uh, these clients understand that, hey, you know, in some cases, yes, your projects may just consist of a rendering and just a short write-up uh, because that project is just kicked off. But, right. you know, for those high profile projects, you know, put some effort into it and go deep with some of the storytelling that's possible there. Because I could not agree more, yeah. There's a concept, I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, I, I use it a lot when talking to clients. Uh, I think the Nielsen group put it out called, uh, they say peop, uh, people on the web are informivores was their term, kind of like carnivores, but you know, they're following this information scent, you know, and they're scan, like you, you know, use the term scanning. So they're hunting through pages to find what they want. Um, so that's why you've got to make it very scannable, very easy to find, but they will go deep if they find, you know, if they kind of land on that, what, what they've been kind of following along. And I've always loved that informable work concept. Um, 
because we get the pushback a lot that, you know, nobody reads anything, you know, and we say they do, if you can, if they can find what they're really looking for, they can go deep. So. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, the other thing with the ability to go deep too, and this is kind of related to, yeah, you know, I mean, some companies might refer to it as their thought leadership hub, their knowledge hub, mm -hmm. their blog. Um, but, you know, uh, where I see a lot of clients uh, make some mistakes there as well is, you know, let's say there's an article in ENR and, you know, they're just dropping, you know, maybe some scanned PDF in there, or right. it's just a short little blurb about it. It's like, you know, leverage that content, you know, maybe pull excerpts from that content, drop in some pull quotes from that content and actually publish that content on your site. So it's actually a page that, you know, somebody can actually dive a little bit deeper and, and read more while they're on your site and they're not exactly. going off site. Um, and of course, you know, provide, you know, a proper credit to, hey, here's the original article link, which may require registration, but you can go view the full article online, which, you know, would then go to Silicon Valley yeah. Business Journal, ENR, mm -hmm. or, you know, one of those, those trade uh, publications. We have a whole article on how to do that, um, because uh, um uh, often they have to buy the reprint, right? Reprint. We still say reprint, but they'll they have to per, you know pay the rights to the media because we do PR, so pay the media outlets uh, rights to to publish that full thing. But as long as they link back to and and pay the reprint rights, but yeah, I can't agree can't agree more. Well, um, one thing I'd love to dive in is um, your firm's um, custom, um, basically your custom content management system and how you've kind of looked at what. Um, AEC firms' needs are. Um, so, you know, um, and AEC marketers, you know, um, I mean, bless them because um, the ones that I know, they're just buried in requests all day long, you know, proposals, qualifications, packages, resumes, um, you know, all these things. And uh, what I really loved when I first saw your tool was how you really thought through that and then integrated it with the website so that there's not a lot of this. So kind of talk me through how you guys develop that and, and, what, and what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of this is just really being exposed and and just you know hearing some recurring themes, uh, whether mm -hmm. it's themes or just pain points from either you know marketing folks or maybe in some cases you know I mean some of the clients we work with don't even really have a marketing right. department, so it's, it's you know it's the principals from that firm or it's a you know a project manager, um, and so you know a lot of that was. Uh, uh, what that really resulted in is okay. And I always like to say like, you know, what we do is way beyond websites because, you know, right. uh, what we would like to think about and, and, you know, some of our clients just even hearing how they react to some of the, the tools that we've built for them and some of the things they've referred to it, even though it's not accurate where you've heard like the term CRM and it's like, well, I don't think you exactly know what you know CRM means, but I get what you're saying is you're saying that, Hey, you actually have this like single source of truth for some of this data. Mm -hmm. um, you would be, and maybe you wouldn't be shocked or surprised because you've probably, you know, been in the trenches and working with these clients, but, you know, small regional firms all the way to some large national firms. When we are in the midst of these website redesign projects, and it was a matter of sort of collecting and understanding, where's all your project data? You know, your write-ups on your projects, your photos, you would be surprised. I mean, it's, well, photos are over on Dropbox and we've got, you know, a local drive that's got all of our project write-ups. It's an Excel file. And so, you know, this was something that we just saw happening time and time again. And what we also realized is that, you know, why isn't that? And, and I realized that there are some platforms out there that sort of purport to do some of this stuff in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, this single source of truth for, for projects or, or for, for resumes. Um, but through the process of just building these content management systems that really sort of set up a data structure that's very unique to that client, but there are some common sort of themes and, and structure around that data for some of these clients. But what, what they started to realize is that like, wow, okay, all of our project data is sitting in this system right here. This is powering our website. Um, but how cool would it be if this data, now that it's you know kind of referred to as the single source of truth, we've got all of our projects in there, we've got the write-ups, the short excerpts, you know, the, the project, uh, budget, who the architect was, all those sort of familiar data points. Um, what a lot of these clients, you know, started to realize, and this was, uh, again, through conversations, um, was th there's no real way, to, you know, because we're trying to put together a qualifications package, or we're putting together a proposal package. Um, we're reinventing the wheel. There's only one person internally who can kind of generate these documents. They're having to open up InDesign and create this and you know, every time they do that, they're sort of spinning away and thinking about, well, where should the photo go on this one? What font should I use? 
And it's just, it's wasted time, but it's also just really generating just inconsistency with the, the output of that. Right. So what a lot of our clients um, really love about the content management systems that we build is that that's kind of a component. It gives them that single source of truth for their projects, which powers their website. It powers the portfolio section on their website, but it's also powering the, the automation of collateral for them. So now they've got these project sheets, which are, are branded project sheets, which are now being generated. So nobody needs to create those. We sort of think about the design upfront. We think about, okay, will all of these projects conform to you know, a one page sheet or do we need to consider maybe how these could break potentially two to two or to three pages um, to support you know, just variances in, in the content uh, on those, those project sheets. Um, and so it's really created a, a lot of efficiencies for these, these, these team members. Yeah. Um, and it's not just one person who can do it. You know, folks on the website can download data sheets, uh, project data sheets, but also internally folks can, you know, download those, those sheets that maybe have some of that more secretive information that you don't want to make available that's, you know, that's, that's on the website. So it might have, you know, some of those references baked into that project sheet that's only accessible to internal team members when you want to download right. some of that data. And, and the same thing with, with resumes that we've been doing um, where, uh, you know, the clients are able to f- drop in all their, their resumes for their team members um, into the system and to generate that, that collateral. Um, and those, those resumes really have nothing to do with the public facing website. It's just a place for them to just have this single source of truth for right. these resumes and manage different versions of those resumes. Cause that resume may, may need to be tweaked for a data center project versus maybe a, a TI project. So it gives them that ability to have some, some standard information, you know, the photo, the person's name, their bio, maybe any lead credentials they have, um, but be able to spin up different versions of, uh, of those resumes based on the opportunity that they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, they're pursuing. Yeah. I'd love to hear. So for, for firms that were in that, um, uh, oh, it's in one place and it's over here. And, you know, we don't know if we've even got it clients to then implementing your system. What has been some of the feedback that they've heard that you've heard from them in terms of, I can, ima- I can imagine it's sort of revolutionary for them because it, it, it would really change the day-to-day life of a in-house marketer or a principal who's, who's trying to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. So with one of our clients, a mechanical contractor down in Silicon Valley, um, you know, the, the, the words directly out of who he's now the, uh, the, the president of the company, cause they had a transition of all senior, uh, partners, um, you know, uh, retiring and all the junior partners now come in. He literally said, he's like, I've been waiting 10 years for something like this. He's like, I can't believe that it even exists. And, and, you know, what he was referring to goes way beyond what, you know, I was just talking about where it's, it's automating project sheets and it's automating resume sheets. It was more of a, uh, a way for them to actually, uh, to create qualifications packages, and proposal mm-hmm. packages, all from within the system, everything from even just be able to create org charts, which, you know, you know, if, if you give somebody the ability to, you know, to just create those at will, then, you know, they're going to be wasting time. There's inconsistency. So, oh, yeah. you know, I can't just, tell you how many org charts we've designed for clients. <laughs> yeah. So, you it's know, now the there's, mm-hmm. it's, it's literally results in, you know, it's, it's, it's a process that, you know, takes out, you know, typically takes hours and maybe there's only one or two people internally who can do it, but now you've opened it up. So now you've got all these different folks who can actually come into the system and create a qualification package or a proposal package in yeah. minutes. Now, what this does not mean, it, it, and I think what that does is that actually allows you to focus on the proposal, you know, the stuff that actually gets dropped into right. the proposal, right. you know, that cover letter. What and that's, matters. Yeah. that's where you should be spending your time mm-hmm. and really putting all your effort. It's not in, you know, okay, well, which project do I want to point it? And, you know, how, how can we re- think about maybe redesigning, you know, the layout mm-hmm. of these project sheets? So, you know, all that stuff is just drag and drop within the system. They're just dragging in all the relevant project sheets they want, all the relevant uh, resume sheets. Um, but then, you know, it, it really frees up that time so that you can focus on that high value stuff, which yeah. is, you know, the actual writing of the, the proposal. Right. Yeah, that's great. Um, what about, um, are, are you seeing any trends in any, because, you know, websites are kind of, they're like fashion and that some things go into style and other things go out of style. Are you seeing anything? Um, I'm, I'm always just curious as to what's happening. And then if, even from a tech, you know, obviously I, you know, for a lot of our clients, we don't do web at all, but, you know, uh, ADA compliance was an issue for a while. And are, what are some of the trends you're seeing? 
Yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned the ADA compliance because we just had a, an issue that just came up. Um, you know, a, a lot of that, the, the ADA compliance, that's stuff that we already start to address even in the design phase of, of a yeah. project. It's not something that you develop a site. And so that even has to do with just like the, the contrast of, you know, typography that might be on top of photos and how you apply tints to that so that the text is readable. Um, and maybe ADA, we should back up before we um, just explain yeah. to the audience who's not uh, aware. So do you want to ex explain that real quick for the for someone who might be listening and thinking, what are they talking about with ADA compliance? Yeah. So, I mean, this is people like and I, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't even know exactly uh, the American Disabilities Act. So, you Americans know, it means somebody who. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it might be somebody who maybe has, you know, um, uh, visual you know, impairment or visual impairment. It might be, yeah, hearing. Just, yeah. Right. Yep. So it's making sure that that website is going to function for those for that individual, so that mm -hmm. they can actually, you know, use some technology they may have on their computer that you know is reading through screen text, and it does it in a logical sort of hierarchical manner that you know is sort of mapping to how that page lays out from right. you know the page heading to an intro snippet to maybe some subsequent bullet points that start to you know maybe dive a little bit deeper into a particular uh, subject matter. Um, we could probably spend like an entire show actually I talking know, yeah. about this, and it's and it's and, and I think provide a lot of value for your yeah your uh, your listeners. Um, but you know there are some really amazing. You know, so again, it's got to be baked into your design process and into mm -hmm. your development process. But there's also some really nice tools that are out there uh, that actually allow you to essentially kind of you know plug and play, and you can actually enable you know an accessibility widget directly onto your your website. Nice. Um, so, you know, through that widget, through just, you know, applying some some standards and some best practices around design and development uh, when you're looking at the website, and also just through having, you know, an accessibility statement on your website, mm -hmm. which sort of talks about, hey, these are the, you know, existing standards that we're sort of conforming to. But, you know, if you happen to notice there's any areas for improvement, reach out to us, let us know. Um, because very, you know, there there, there is this faction of, uh, of attorneys that are out there who are, you know, opportunists. And I think that they're right. kind of, you know, lawsuits. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And mm -hmm. um, not unlike what I saw happen just out here in San Francisco in the restaurant industry. And I'm sure it's not unique to San Francisco where attorneys would show up at a, 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 a restaurant store with, with a letter, a demand letter, it's wow. essentially saying, Hey, if you, if you pay us $25,000, we're not going to bother you about some of these ADA issues that are related to your, your restaurant. Um, and issues that, you know, probably couldn't even be fixed because of just permitting, you know, uh, issues, right. you know, related to a city. Um, so it's, you know, but that's not to say that, you know, those, those concerns aren't valid and that, you know, right. you should absolutely strive to make sure that, you know, the website is, is compliant um, with mm -hmm. that. And it's, it's an ever evolving process. There's not just mm -hmm. a, you know, you just implement something now and it's, it's, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you know, continually tracking that. And a yeah. lot of these external uh, providers actually have these auditing tools where you can actually just plug in your domain name, run it through a quick audit. And it kind of gives you a hit list of like, Hey, here's some areas where you can improve some things. Here's where you're scoring, you know, really great. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, that's, that's definitely a, a very uh, yeah. relevant and timely uh, topic. What about uh, design trends? You know, it's funny you started out talking about Flash, but you know, for a while there, it seemed there was like this trend of uh, websites being all one page. You know, are you seeing any other trends come about right now, or have we sort of settled on a pretty, uh, you know, uh, clear idea of how people navigate the web? And are are there new things that uh, people are having to think about? I think that there are some pretty solid, like, just standards that are in place right now. I think mm -hmm. you know when you try to innovate too much, like. I just don't think that, you know, the construction sector is where you should be doing any of the innovation, you know. Uh, yeah, it's you know, not a place uh, for shiny object syndrome. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I think mm -hmm. the next release is Spider-Man, you know, Spider-Man's movie. That's where they can right. sort of push the right. envelope. Yeah, because, exactly. I mean, keep in mind, like, people are, they're just coming to the website. They, they don't, I mean, they don't want to be entertained. They're there to just gather information, to vet your firm, and to mm -hmm. get that information, and then to, pretend, you know, and to share it with colleagues yeah. or to, you know, make that decision as far as, you know, whether or not they want to continue the conversation and, and take a next step. So, you know, I would say, you know, this is, this is not the industry where we want to be, you know, setting any, any new trends for design, but right. you know, I think a lot of it is just, it's just common sense. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you understand that, Hey, people are going to be coming to this website, let's make sure that they can find information easily. I know that, you know, a lot of architectural firms um, with their projects like to have these 
beautiful photos, um, yeah. but there's no context. Uh, so it's almost like this game of whack a whack a mole, where it's right. like, okay, well, let yeah. me now hover over this photo to see, yeah. you know, what this project name was, uh, you know, where its location is. So it's finding that balance. Um, yeah, I see that on and, marketing uh, agency sites too, where they have these big visuals of their creative work, and there's no clear context. You don't really understand, you know, why they did that creative, what what the strategy was. So yeah, that, that our our industry can be guilty of it too. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's, you know, I mean, all you have to do is really just sort of go back to some of those just basic like design mm -hmm. user experience design principles is understanding mm -hmm. like, you know, this person's coming to my website. How can I how can I sort of just create this this pathway for them to easily find the information that they're they're looking for? Yeah. And how often um, I, my guess is obviously construction companies are, are uh, taking longer, but how often like, if a client comes to you and says, how, how often should I be redoing my website? Is there a lifespan to websites that you see um, that you say, look, if it's more than, you know, I, I'm guessing consumer brands updated a lot, a lot uh, more often. Yeah, I think that can depend on a few things. One is, you know, let's say, you know, a construction client, they've gone through a big redesign. Um, but in three years, they're actually doing a rebrand, you know, well, you know, clearly that's going to be a time you're going to have to sort of, you know, uh, rethink all the design systems. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would say that, uh, and, and it's not to say that, you know, once you launch a site, it's done, you know, there's, there's, there's always an, you know, yes. evolving process, adding new features, adding new sections. Constant. Yeah. Um, but I would say that, I mean, and what we typically see with our clients is, you know, sort of that, that five-year five time frame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, I think when you, you know, and sometimes I think, you know, clients maybe may get a little bit of sticker shock when they you know, you sort of explain to them, hey, this is the investment for this, this project. And I like to refer to it as an investment because you really are, you're investing in your firm and it's, it's, you Absolutely. know, um, and if you kind of break that out over the course of five years, it's, it's really not a whole lot. I mean, if you say, okay, well, you know, this project is going to be a, you know, a hundred thousand dollar project, but if you break that out over the course of the next five years, that's well, roughly twenty thousand yeah. dollars a year to to well, have this publishing yeah. platform that's in place well and it, especially if you make it uh, work to where it's solving other problems for you um you know helping you with all the other uh, marketing needs that you have and also like you said uh, you know these are clients that are building you know 50 million dollar facilities um so uh, letting your website hurt your brand um, is is uh, really short sighted when it comes to a purchase that large. So um, yeah, we were uh, we're talking right now to a a client. Uh, they're um, they're a pretty substantial uh, electrical contractor, and they found us by way of uh, another you know uh, large electrical contract that we were working with, and they really liked the work that we did. And um, you know. They admittedly said, listen, like we know that we need to start to place a big focus on design and design to me, obviously there's a visual component to it, but I think design also relates to, you know, messaging mm -hmm. and, you know, that creates a lot of efficiencies because now you have one way, uh, you know, you kind of have your, your canned like elevator pitch. So people don't have to rethink like, well, what's our short pitch? What's our, our, you know, our, our long form elevator pitch. You know, you have that messaging and it's all in, in one place. So, you know, people internally can use that. Um, but this firm was telling us that, you know, we realize this is a relationship driven business. We've got great relationships, but there's also turnover with some of those relationships. So, you know, that person mm. who may have been one of your, uh, one of those folks that you had that strong relationship, yeah, you know, maybe they've gone to another firm and mm. now there's a new person who's sort of, you know, uh, moved into that position and they, they, uh, they let me know that, hey, you know, we actually lost out on a project. It was, it was a follow-on project for, you know, same, pro same client. Um, but because they were dealing with a new person, you know, they just weren't putting the time and effort into creating, you know, these materials, whether it's a proposal mm. or a qual And they said that we lost that project because oh, wow. of the quality of the proposal that we, you know, this, this new person um, yeah. was reviewing in spite of the relationship that we had with, you know, um, uh, with the client. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always say, you know, why would you take that chance? Why would you take the chance of, of losing projects? You know, again, we're not talking about making major investments in, in some of these tools and some of these systems that have those in place, but why would you risk that chance? You know, I, you know, so many 
of these clients uh, that we work with, uh, you know, they, uh, you know, when you look at something like, you know, job sites, you know, uh, they're, they are so proud of like, you know, look how locked in, look how clean this job site right. is. Like, why don't you take that same mindset and apply that to your digital presence uh, as yeah. well? Um, because if, if, if you do that, you know, it's, uh, I just don't know why they wouldn't do that. Why, why right. did you run the risk of somebody coming to your website, whether it's a, uh, an existing client or it's a prospective client or partner and having them walk away, uh, with that, just, you know, an inkling, and, and it may not be, and obviously it's, it's probably not even reflective of, of how they do perform work, you know, mm-hmm. on the job site. Um, but why, uh, why run that risk of, of that potentially, uh, happening? Yeah. You know, I use that phrase a lot. I, I say we're, we're making your brand reflective of the quality of work that you already deliver. So you ha- they have to match up, you know, yep. um, you're right, because it's it's such an, uh, an oversight. It's such a loss, really, to put so much into doing quality work. And then people assume that you don't do quality work because uh, they come to your website and it, it looks uh elementary, there's typos, there's, you know, bad graphics, whatever it is, they can't find the information they need, there's no information. So you spend all yeah. that time getting your business straight. Yeah, you've got, they too have to marry up. Um, yeah, and I think, you know, when you do think about, you know, the, the, the scale of the projects that they're building, like the level mm-hmm. of execution, the level of focus, of precision, you know, aren't those things that you want to sort of plant in people's heads, mm-hmm. like when they come to the website, it, those are some of the things that pop into their mind of like, wow, look at the level of just execution. Like these guys yeah. have got their messaging dialed in. Um, yeah. So again, like why, why wouldn't you put that same effort into making sure that that, that digital touch point is, is communicating those same messages and, and themes for your, your firm. Yeah. Love it. Well, thank you so much. I know we could talk for a very long time. So um uh, but I think we should wrap it up, but um, great conversation. I've been very impressed with um, Scott's work at NK Interactive and what they're doing in terms of their um, content management system. And I know that you are also rolling it out as a software as a service. Is that correct? Yeah, that's in our roadmap because we realize that, you know, this is something that, uh, that, that, that uh, we're not trying to fr- find product market fit. Um, we, mm-hmm. we understand that like what we've developed, there is product. Uh, market fit there there is yeah. a need for for something uh like this um and so that's uh that is definitely in our roadmap is to to uh be rolling out a, a software as a service platform for this concept of a single source of truth for projects for resumes the automation right. of collateral and then the tools that are built on top of it whether it's a qualifications proposal builder or whether it's the ability to spin up a quick capabilities presentation a digital capabilities presentation that's great. So if people want to learn more, where should they go? I think uh, our website is probably the best place to go. And that's, uh, it's just nk-interactive.com. So N is in Nancy, K is in kite-interactive.com. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Thanks for listening to Spill the Ink, a podcast by Reputation Inc. We'll see you again next time and be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.